Hi, I'm Judy Bernstein. Uh, my writing name is Judy A. Bernstein. I actually became involved with refugees in the mid 90s through a community economic development program out at San Diego State University, where I was a student advisor. Um, a graduate student could do either a nonprofit or a small business. And interestingly, about three quarters of the students ended up being refugees. So I worked, um, I did that for about six years. And in 2001, my student was from Sudan. And at the end of our year um, of doing a project together, which was a nonprofit, a sewing center for women with, a, with child care, he asked me if I would uh, take three young men who were just coming to San Diego as refugees. Um, they're known as the Lost Boys of Sudan. Most of them are about 19 years old. Um, and show them around San Diego for a couple days. I was one of those people that didn't know a refugee from an immigrant from anything else. You know, I set out that first day, uh, interested to meet these young men that uh, Joseph had told me about. I had seen on 60 Minutes that when they were tiny boys, five, six, seven years old, um, due to their villages being attacked by the Northern Sudanese government, they'd ended up walking a thousand miles um, over several years to finally get to um, a refugee camp in Kenya for safety. They're Dinka, um, the three I worked with. You know, they live in very communal villages. It's all rural, it's agriculture, it's cattle. And then of course they left all that and, and were thrown into the middle of a genocide and a war for three to five years. And then they spent the last nine years in a refugee camp. So everything about their world, which is so, so different from ours. Um, you know, they'd never used a light switch, fork or knife, water, running water. Um, so there were all those kinds of things, but also the cultural differences. The one really great thing they had was a little bit of English that they had learned writing in the sand under a tree. So if you can imagine um, starting at that point, but they were also um, 19, very eager, to um, have this opportunity, uh, but also alone, orphans, no family support. So um, some things were challenges, some things were um, you know, beneficial. And each refugee comes with a, a, something different to offer and something you know, that's gonna be more challenging. Some refugees come here, they've been very successful in their home, own country, but they've lost everything and they don't speak English. So that presents a whole different set of problems. They did not tend to talk about what happened at first. I was very curious, um, you know, because uh, you hear, hear sort of the general story when you see a 15 minutes, 60 minutes, but you don't know what happened to each person. They were so uh, enamored and worried about life here that that wasn't the main subject. That very first day that we met them, we went to Walmart. They were mesmerized by the school supplies aisle. They'd never had like a composition book or papers and pencils like that in the camp. And so um, we got everybody paper and pencils and composition books and all of that. And they asked me that day, they said, you know, if we write, will you correct our English? And I said, sure, you know, of course. So they started writing that very first day and were giving me little stories on pieces of paper. Now, some of them were about life back home. Some of them were about what happened on the journey. So they were writing about things they weren't talking about. At the end of the year, I said, would you guys like to put these stories together? Um, if I can sort them out, because they were writing not in sequence or anything like that. Um, and maybe we could have a little booklet or a reference. They really started writing and they really were frustrated because they didn't have enough money to go to school. And I had been a writer, so I thought it's really far-fetched, but maybe if we did a book, they might earn a little money towards school or it would get them some attention and a school would help them or get them into school or something like that. 
maybe something good could come from this. The book came out in 2005, which is uh, They Poured Fire on Us from the Sky. That was our first book. And uh, Benson, Benjamin, and Alefo um, all wrote their own stories. I just organized them and edited them. I recognized in them uh, a real a unique voice. Um, their, their voices were different, but they were unique, um, lyrical, and, uh, you know, and the material uh, and what they had gone through, of course, was, um, was huge. But they were all really brave about it, and they were all driven, really, to do this book because the war was still going on back in Sudan. And it was terrible. And they didn't even know if their families were alive. Um, nobody could even get up to the villages to see if their mother survived or who was alive. And in 2003, another genocide erupted in the western part of Sudan, which is called Darfur. They were motivated to get this book out to speak for people who were suffering in silence and stuck in this horrible situation. And here they were, and they could use their voices. So they bravely use their voices. And um, I think it was a bit of a shock when the book came out that they would be so public because the LA Times interviewed them. They ended up on the front page of the LA Times. It was like shocking. It helped bring attention to that situation back home. You know, one thing for them, um, it wasn't all feel good uh, because actually they got a little bit of heat about it from their countrymen like who are you to tell the story and this is just your side and so when people come out of a terrible situation like that and all that conflict of course it's sort of like here everybody doesn't agree and what sounds right and just to one person does not to the other just meeting them was probably the most profound uh of impact that they had on me and that is you can't meet somebody like that and really get to know them and care for them um, and not completely reevaluate your whole life and your own priorities and the small things that get you down. The book came out right in the middle of probably the peak of the Darfur genocide so Sudan was on the radar of so many schools and colleges so we really spent the next four, five years traveling and speaking and that sort of thing to schools. So it really widened my life and the scope of my life. It, you know, I, I learned about things I had no idea about. Refugees, politics, war, conflict. I just think the impact is tremendous. There's this democratization taking place of storytelling. There's so many forms. And I think all storytelling um, creates empathy. And if there's anything we need these days, it's empathy for each other. If you can touch somebody emotionally and they can see you know, your side, it, it changes people. It changes their perspective. So I think it's hugely important You know, people need to be validated, if, especially if they've been so oppressed and so, um, you know, treated unjustly. There's this, you know, what that kind of injustice does for you. I think that getting your story out is, is huge. Not everybody wants to do it, um, but for those that do, it, it can be great. I think there's a lot to be said for that. So whether people are telling their stories in a video like this, or um, they're writing it, or they're just doing it in person, there's a lot to that. Just really ask themselves why they want to tell it. You know, you, you don't have to tell everything. A memoir is what you want to tell. What I would encourage them to do is first, Try writing, try writing a short story, or maybe you write an article that's, you know, one particular aspect of it. First of all, that's a smarter way to get started because it's much easier to get an essay or an article or a short story published than it is a whole book. Plus, it's a great way to learn. Really, the question to start with is, why do you want to tell your story and what do you want it to do? What's your purpose?
there's a lot of statistics about the success that refugees do have and what they add to our, um, our society. Anything we do to help them, we're really helping ourselves.